Hey guys, it's Carla. Thank you for being here. Today I'm starting off with the white canvas with the sketch drawn on. Uh, if you want the sketch to this, like the outline for this painting, um, I'll put a link in the description below uh, for the outline and the reference photo. Um, so I'm starting with my background with just a, just a flat synthetic brush. Uh, this is just a cheap brush and cheap paint. Um, so I've mixed up the color that I want my background to be because this is, when you have a snowy background, you have to have some color underneath it. So, um, and this kind of slate blue, kind of a grayish blue is a good color to have. And I'll be adding, um, some purple shades to it later. So I'm just very roughly painting in around my sketch. Um, just, I'm working fast. I'm keeping my brush moving because I want this to be very loose. You would think that painting loose would be easy, but most of us struggle with it. We want everything to be perfect and um, loose painting is not that. Okay, so now I'm mixing up a color for my, for the pink in the little girl's clothes. And again, very loose painting. Just keep your brush moving. Now right here where her face is, uh, I, I end up changing it several times because um, I changed my mind about it, but um, so this pink right here, I'll end up changing. But. So I want the boots and the hat and the coat to be pink. Uh, but now you could make this like a boy painting and make it a different color. Um, I just chose pink for this. And now I'm just mixing up a color for the pants. This is not a difficult painting once you've got the outline on. Um, it's it's kind of just fill in the spaces once you've got the outline on. With any painting, um, it might look difficult, but but if you've got the outline, then you know it's just a matter of coloring everything in. And with this loose style of painting, it's it's really easy because. Again, you're not looking for perfection. You want that loose, kind of messy look, and that's easy to achieve. And it's good that you don't have to have expensive brushes and expensive paints and stuff. This is all just very cheap, inexpensive stuff. Now again, like we, like we did on the background, this white um, on the clothes needs a background too. It needs like an undercoat before, before you put the white on. And I'm just dabbing this white on. I'm picking up quite a bit of paint on my brush and just dabbing in the white. And because white paint dulls as it dries. I'll have to come back and and brighten this up. And you could use any brush for this, just whatever you feel comfortable with. This is just the brush I had in my hand, so, um, but all I'm doing is just dabbing it on, so you could, you could do that with most any brush. Mm 
Now right here, um, I decided to put some, some of that white around the sleeve too. So I put my base coat on and then dabbed in some white. So now I've created a shadow color for, for the pants. And um, again, whatever area you're working in, just decide what, what brush you need to use. Because you might be, um, you might be making a different size painting than I am. This is an eight by 10. And so if you, if you use something bigger, then you might want a bigger brush or whatever. So just determine what, what size and what kind of brush you, you need to use for it. All of the ones that I'm using in this painting are just synthetic brushes, but sometimes I'll use a flat brush and sometimes a round brush and um, I can't remember if I used anything other than those two. So on this painting, um, I've got my light source coming from the right hand side. So all of my shading will be, will be toward the left. Um, so keep that in mind when you're painting. You've got, you've got to know where your light source is coming from. So now I'm mixing up a color for, for my snowman for the, um, the base color of the snowman. And I'm just very loosely uh, brushing this in. And keep in mind while you're painting this that you want to cover up your pencil lines. So, you know, at some point, once the painting is finished, you want, you want your pencil lines covered up. Um, you don't have to do it right here at this step because there's going to be other colors on top of it. But... You know, you don't want to, once your painting is finished, you don't want to see those hard pencil lines. Now that is kind of a purplish color. So I'm just taking it and uh, brushing it into the background as well just to kind of unify the the colors All right, now I'm mixing up a blue and brown shade, which makes almost black uh, for the hat. And you could use just flat black, but to me, black is, to me, black is too flat. And so if you make your own black, it has more, uh, you, you can add more warmth to it or uh, more of a blue shade or whatever. So depending on how much blue and how much brown you put into it, um, you can change the shade a little bit and it doesn't have to be just a flat black. So with any painting, keep in mind that blue and brown make a really pretty black shade. And you can use whatever colors you want in this. Uh, if you want this 
shade of red. I just mixed red and brown together. So the brown just kind of um, dulls down the, tones down the red a little bit. Makes it more of a, I guess a, a almost a brick red or barn red or something. So I guess what I would call a country red. Now right here at the end of the scarf, you can just kind of feather it out to create the fringe. Now I'm not showing you when I when I rinse my brush, but obviously you know when you when you switch to a lighter color, you do have to rinse your brush. All right, so right now I need to start thinking about shadows. So wherever I want a shadow to be, I'm just going to skip that. I'm not going to put the white on it. So that base color will be my shadow. So like the shadow for the scarf right there, uh, I just left it without any white. And keep in mind that the light is coming from the right hand side, so the shadows are gonna be cast toward the left. So right here, coming down beside the scarf, I'm not going all the way over to the scarf because that's my shadow right there. And the same thing down here, I wanna leave shadow underneath it. And then down toward the bottom of the snowman, because it curves under, you're gonna have some shadow down there too, so it's gonna get um, darker as you come down. So you're not gonna have as much white there. And right here, I want to leave a shadow for, for the arm. I hope all these shadows make sense to you um, because that's what makes makes a painting look three-dimensional is the the shading and right there where the eyes are the hat is shading that so that's why that's not uh, got white on it. So this, I'm just using a pointed brush now, a round pointed brush for the, the eyes and the mouth. And now I want to dry it real good so that I can see what, um, how much my white needs brightened up because it does dull down once you dry it. So now I'm going to work on the, sh uh, the shading on the little girl now. 
and I've watered down some red and brown and I'm just kind of playing around with it again this is this this face area is going to change again so don't worry about it right now but um, the shading in the clothes I want it to be there to be more contrast there so I've darkened up this shadow color Most of my paintings, I just kind of change them as I go. And so I'll try to tell you when I do that so that if it's a step that you don't want to take that's going to get changed later, then I'll, I can let you know. So that face area is going to end up being just hair. I want to get these dark shadows in so that it will have dimension. So just keep working at your shadows until until it looks right to you and it helps if you occasionally step back away from it or walk away from it and come back uh, either look at it from a distance or walk away and come back to it either way that that helps you to get a better perspective on it I kept trying to decide whether to actually put a face in here or to make it kind of obscure and and not you know where you can't really tell what's going on and um, or to just completely cover it up with hair I did end up putting hair in it but um, but I also made it where you can't really tell what's going on so right here, I'm just kind of covering up my pencil lines. So I mixed up a really light pink shade for that because I don't want I don't want those those lines showing later. All right, now with my round brush, I'm tapping in some snow laying on him. Now I don't have it laying on her because. Um, in my mind, she just walked out there, so she doesn't have snow laying on her. But he's been sitting out there, so he does. And um, so just on the ledges, on the places where you would think snow would pile up, just kind of dab in some white. So definitely on the hat and I'll put some on the nose and there would be some on the arm um, and now I'm brightening up what where where there's no shadow, especially on the right side. I want it to be really bright where the sun is shining. But the brighter you get your, your white, 
the more obvious your shadows are going to be and it's going to look more dimensional. So the darks are important and the lights are important. So right here where the bottom tier of the snowman starts, you want to make sure that it's got some kind of disti distinction between it and the, the middle section. And again, just get gradually darker toward the bottom. And that'll give it that rounded effect. Now I'm putting some snow laying on the scarf just in random places. Now down here, I want to show where the ground is and, uh, you know, she's been walking around in it, so it's kind of chunky. Now I'm just putting some highlights on her clothes, just here and there, just to give it, again, more dimension and texture. Sometimes you have to come back two or three times with the white just to get it as bright as you want it. Um, and I wanted this pretty bright because to me, even though it's snowing, um, it's really bright out there. So I want, I want the white to be as white as it can be. Okay, now I'm, this is where I decided to put in hair. Which also gives it some uh, more contrast there. Now, if you're painting a specific person, like your child or your grandchild, um, 
you could go ahead and and paint a face in there or um, a certain hair color or whatever um, but if you just if you just do it this way where all you see is hair then then it could pretty much be anybody just kind of a generic child whispering to a snowman Just play around with this until, until until it looks right to you. That's kind of what I had to do. Now I'm just putting more depth into the the shadows on the pants. Guys, if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and um and if you're liking my channel, if you haven't subscribed to it yet, um, this would be a good time to do that and uh, check out my other videos. And if you'll hit that notification bell, then when I publish another video, then you'll get notified. Okay, so now I'm using a fan brush with watered down white paint. And I'm just flicking this onto the canvas for uh, falling snow. And you can do as much or as little of this as you want. You could really have it uh, a blizzard out there or whatever. Keep in mind though that you're not just putting this around around the snowman and, and the child. You're it's going to go over them too because it's snowing it's snowing in front of them too so uh, there'll be snow all over the canvas And that's the last step, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this and um, give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.